All right, guys, we're out here on Kentucky Lake. I'm going to give you a quick rundown on what's been going on out here the last few weeks. Of course, if you live in the area or you're familiar with this area, you know we've had a lot of rain here in the last couple weeks. Water came up. Water, water levels got up to like 362. It was flooded up in the bushes. We had some fun up shallow for, for probably about a week, week and a half, maybe close to two weeks, you know. Um, fish were up spawning, and, and anytime that water goes up, creeps up into the buck brush, you know, you can have some fun. And it didn't catch a lot of big ones, but there's there, there were a lot of two to, I'd say, two and a half class pound fish um, up shallow this year. You can catch a good one once in a while, but um, the thing that everybody wants to know is, you know, um, what's the offshore might like? And I'll tell you, um, the offshore fishing the last few years has been a bit of a challenge. If you followed along um, the last few years, you know that's that's kind of my that's kind of my thing. I've I've um, spent a lot of time offshore. I, I know the lake fairly well when it comes to offshore fishing. I feel like that's kind of my strength, I guess. And the last few years, man, it's been just just brutally tough. And you know I've talked about it in the past. It's just a combination of a lot of things from um, lack of vegetation to um, the carp to lack of bait, you know, a combination of a lot of things. And, and the biggest thing for me, I think was the, the last few years of, of having bad spawns, you know, um, the last couple years we've had really good spawns from what I understand talking to some of the biologists, but just having that class of fish that goes out to the river and, 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 and gets in those big schools, um, just weren't there. But the good news is we've got a ton of fish in the lake right now. There's a lot of two pound class of fish in the lake and that's the fish that are going to make start making their way out to the river and start schooling and um i'm happy to say that i've had some fun out here i've had some i've had a few days here recently where it was like the old days i mean and and you know you can come out here and crank a, a big plug around or throw a big swim bait you can put down some of the spinning rods and and pick up some of those old school techniques and, and have some fun but you know i don't know how long it's gonna last we'll see i hope it lasts all summer uh the the cool thing is that um we've got a ton of fish in the lake you, you've seen with recent reports um the smallmouth has just been dominant i mean it's been strong and all of a sudden every year those smallmouth kind of start to disappear you'll still catch some now there's a lot of smallmouth that are mixed in a lot of these largemouth schools right now which is kind of cool to see it's different because it's something we're not used to seeing here on kentucky lake i know if you go down to pickwick um you'll see that a lot but we're starting to get more smallmouth in the lake and they're starting to run with those largemouth but the last few years, um, there's not been much of an offshore bite. You know, last year there was a few schools out, and then it didn't last very long. So I'm I'm hoping that this year it lasts a little bit longer than it did last year. And you know, with forward-facing sonar and the new technology out there, guys are going to figure out how to catch these fish later on in the summer, even when it slows way down. You know, from you know just being able to see them on your live scope or your active target and getting out there just kind of roaming around and picking different baits and throwing at them and somebody's going to figure out how to catch those smallmouth in the summertime that usually kind of disappear on us but uh water temps about 80 degrees i mean water levels back to summer pool we're holding right there around 359 right now typical for this time of year we've had some real hot muggy days and it's just driving those fish out and the places you want to start looking is the mouths of the creeks um i've not spent a lot of time looking on the main river for fish yet most of the fish that i've caught have been at in that 15 to 20 foot range at the mouths of the creeks and and man it, it's like the old days you can pull up on some places out here and, and and see some schools of fish and it's and they'll bite i mean some of them aren't you know they're a little finicky and don't really want to bite i don't know if they've been messed with or what but um very cool to see some fish getting out here and and schooling back up and and you can have some fun so hopefully la that lasts here for for the next few weeks and um and everybody will be able to get out and have some fun like we used to but i'll talk just a little bit about uh a few baits that that have been working um the flipping bite it's kind of starting to dwindle away you can you can always catch fish up shallow in the summer a lot of those fish live shallow um ever since i started finding some offshore i've not spent a lot of time but uh last week i spent a good good bit of time before the water came all the way back down i was still catching them flipping a six cents prawn um, throwing a little uh, dirty jigs swim bait around or a swim jig around with a little booty tail swim bait on the back of it fishing it up around shallow cover and stuff like that but you know there's still going to be a good number of largemouth up garden fry so you can get up and you can throw a frog around you can throw a swim jig around some of the water willow grass that grows on the on the on the uh, 
right up on the bank. You can still catch some fish doing that. Uh, I would assume, I don't get out early enough to chase a, sh a shad spawn to speak of, but I would assume there's still a pretty decent shad spawn going on. But for the most part, for me, it's been offshore. Um, anybody that's followed along the last few years, you know, watched any anything that I've done the last several years, a big crankbait. This is the Crush 300 from Six Cents. It's the blue truce color. It's the chartreuse with a blue back. I mean, it's a staple here on Kentucky Lake. Anything, anywhere on the Tennessee River, a chartreuse blue crankbait. But you can get out there at the mouths of those creeks, look in that 15 to 20 foot range, and you'll find some schools of fish. And man, I have had a had some fun with that crankbait here in the last few days. Another bait that I throw a lot this time of year is a five inch Ignite swim bait. This is kind of a chartreuse uh, belly with a like a bluish back like that. I think that's Pars Parrot or yeah, I think that's Pars Parrot. I'm not sure exactly which color that is, but um, really good bait to, to toss out there. You know, a lot of times those fish will come out. They'll get they'll slow down on that crankbait. A lot of times you can pick up a big one with that with that swim bait winding it around out there. And everybody knows with the forward facing sonar, um, the little minnow baits. You know this is just a round head jig right here, a little three out hook in it. It's the six cents juggle minnow. Um, it's a little small little bait you can toss around out there. A lot of times those fish will you'll get them fired up with um, your crankbait, and then they'll slow down, and then you can kind of pick them apart and just toss that thing around out there to them. And then another bait that I throw a lot this time of year is a, either, either a drop shot or like a shaky head with that Busa worm on it. That's the Bambusa from Six Cents. Um, you can see I've got that one there. It's, it's rigged on a uh, drop shot there. A lot of times those fish will slow down and they get a little bit harder to catch. And it's uh, what will happen is you'll pull the school out to you and then you can drop straight down to them. They'll get underneath the boat. And that's one thing too that I'll touch on just a little bit, not diving too much in it, but don't be looking for the 30 to 50 fish schools. I'm not saying they're not out here because there are, but if you see some what you think are bass, pull up there and fish and there's a good chance that you look at your trolling, you look underneath your trolling motor and all of a sudden they just show up. I don't know what that is if they like to get under the boat or what, but I've noticed that quite a bit here lately. But, um, if, if you're coming to Kentucky Lake, try those baits, get out here, have some fun. I mean, Kentucky Lake is, you know, that's kind of the saying now, Kentucky Lake is back. And, and man, I am, there's nobody more excited about it than I am. I have, I have seen Kentucky Lake in its best and I've seen it in, in some of the toughest, toughest days that we've had over the last few years. But, you know, a lot of guys gave up on it. Um, I, there was a lot of fishing guides that actually quit and, kind of a bummer you know to see that happen you know when a sport that we love so much and guys just give up on it but you know i said that it, it would it's going to take it a few years and and here we are i mean you know a few years flew flew by quick and it's just going to continue to get better and better and you know the shad something i seen actually today i was out fishing and and you get out around a good school and you see those gizzard shad up skipping uh, being chased by those big largemouth and and that's something we've not seen the last few years the white bass population is absolutely incredible how many white bass are in this system right now and they're just going to continue to 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 get better and better you know as as the summer goes on a lot of guys will start fishing for them but um you know, if you're in the area, try those baits. Check out all of our local tackle stores. We've got some good stores around. Uh, I'm still working with the guys there at High Tech Outdoors. We've got everything that I talk about here uh, in my reports. We carry right there at the store. If you're looking for a fishing trip, sh shoot me an e email at info at brandonhunterfishing.com. Or if you're looking for an electronics trip, uh, Lawrence, Garmin, Hummerbird, we offer it all right there at High Tech Outdoors. Matt, Tony, all those guys. Matt Carter works with us there at the shop. He does a great job on the, with the on-water training with the Garmin. But uh, look us up and come see us, and we'll see you guys on the water.